being said, um, so what's next for you? Like, are you going to be back on reality or are we going to see you maybe on Stars we'll or see. Empire? We'll see. Um, but music wise, I am going on tour this summer Okay. and okay. I'm putting out my EP called I Am Miami and I just put out a single with Lil Wayne and Jeremiah called oh. Wave, which feels like a dance hall mm -hmm. type right. record. Um, so I'm shooting a video to that also and okay. putting that out. So we're just putting out music, which is really all that I ever wanted to do, even through Love & Hip Hop, was just um, create awareness that I exist so more people can encounter my music. Absolutely. Right, and what I think kind of sucks a little bit, because I see a lot of the, the hate that you get on like mm -hmm. social media and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and then you look at, like you say fuck all the reality TV show, and then you, you look at your actual music. Do you think that has hindered you, like, your perception on that TV show has hindered people's ability to take you in musically and taking your talent. In this day and age, I can't really answer that question because I feel that it's not like it used to be. Like nothing is like it used to be. That's probably another reason why I did the show because I realized like I'm so like old school in that in that sense of like certain things go a certain way and um when doing the shows like i mean it's not like we're doing a documentary on veronica vega's life this isn't about veronica vega we're not i'm not executive producing it i have no control over edit so it was i was like really weary about it because you already know going into it there's gonna be something that's somebody else's agenda not yours mm -hmm. um but i I have so much shit in my mind right now that you would think I was high, but I'm not. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> no, I want you to like, like just to say what's on on your mind because I I feel like it, it is kind of hindering because nowadays you see like with oh artists, that's what it was the hindering yeah yeah like I feel like um, people are buying into personalities. I think people do buy into personalities, but I think that had you not watched Love and Hip Hop, you were you weren't even watching my life or my story in general true so true. now you may hate me and there may be some people whose minds you can't change but if you're consistent and you continue to work people will eventually see the truth because the truth is something that is inevitable like right. the truth comes out always never changes. so you might not fuck with me now but if you're a person who would have fucked with me from the beginning from before the show then you're still gonna fuck with me at some point now, if you were somebody who was going to hate on me from the beginning and you were just never going to fuck with it, it doesn't matter what I would have done at any time. Right, you was absolutely. not going to fuck with right, me right, anyways. Right. So I think right now it seems that it could feel that way. Right. But I feel that the people that don't like it or whatever it is, like I'm not a, I'm not a person who stops. Oh, so right. you're going to see me again and again and again. And then what, guess what? One day I'm going to see you and you'll be like, oh, I don't like you. And we'll be like, why? And then we're going to talk. And then, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's right. going to be cool. And then you're going to be like, oh, man, maybe they don't she keep was... That, they don't keep, I, I can imagine. They don't keep that same type of energy in real life when they see you. No. <laughs> it's all love. It's always love. <laughs> <laughs> it's always love. Because like, uh, <laughs> I, I think great. about it like the hate you get and I think about the neutral people like, I feel like it could hinder you a little bit. You know what bothers me more? I love people who are like to the left or to the right. I hate the middle people. Mm. Like the motherfucking, like, mm, you know, people who like, well, you know, I, I like both of them. Like, nah. Right. Pick her. Yeah. Pick her. Like, pick her so I can fucking fight her and then you fucking lose too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you and her both lose. But I hate the whole like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, that's that's what, what the whole thing was with Steph. And it was like, but I mm. talked to Steph about that. I was like, you know, it's kind of like, but I understand too. Like, I think when you know somebody and you understand their perspective, that's somebody who knew both of us. And she was just kind of over the whole show situation. And she was like, this is some bullshit anyway. So she was just kind of like, why would I even take a side when mm. this is like some dumbass shit that doesn't even make sense? You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. I think towards the end is when she started realizing, like, holy shit, this is, like, some scheming-ass lame shit. And then she was like, I fuck with Vega. You know what I'm saying? It's when, But that's what I'm saying. Everybody eventually comes around to the truth. Right, right, right. I can only be me forever. And eventually, it's like if I told you that I was a nice girl, I was a nice girl, I was a nice girl. And then you hung out with me for two years and you was like, she's not a nice girl. I know her. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? You would eventually come around to the truth. The truth always comes out. Is there a moment in the show that you regret? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? There were a lot of scenes. Tell me, if you got a couple of them. Um, well, I don't have regrets, per se, because I don't regret nothing. But... I hate when people say that. I don't know. Like, you no, know. because... You don't because you don't? I wouldn't be in this situation had I done what I was gonna do that I re regret now. Oh, true, true. That's <laughs> right, right. Um, but you know what? I'm just gonna leave it as a no regrets thing and keep it moving because it's still time. So you don't want to you don't want to get into that. Uh -huh. She don't have any regrets. Though. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I thought she was gonna get into it. I, I, no, I was like, man, it's probably best not to. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But yeah, let's talk to um about A to M I A. Mm -hmm. Yay! If you if you want to touch base on for people who are not familiar with that, just a little bit, because I have a, like a question about it. Like if you could tell the viewers. Well, A to M I A is a a spiritual growth journey, a growth journey. It started off with me and my best friend Jesse. And she lives in Atlanta. I'm from Miami. My producer, Polo the Don, was like, yo, uh, we were. I had just got my Jeep. I had a, a brand new Jeep, and I was going to drive it down. I got it in Atlanta, and I was going to drive it down to Miami. She was going to come down with me so I wouldn't drive by myself. And we had gone to have, like, a goodbye dinner. You know, like, just leave, eat something before we right. headed out on the road. And Polo was there, and he was there with his friend. And um, the person that was with him was like, um... You know it's really dangerous to drive your jeep down for so many miles like have you ever heard of i think it's called the death wobble like when you go a certain speed on the highway with a jeep um it could like lose like balance and it could like tip over or whatever so it's like dangerous to take that the jeep over a certain speed i guess is what it is so i was like man i don't give a fuck i'm taking my jeep like imagine getting a new car and somebody telling you like did you hear i'm like yo shut the fuck up before i like so she was like I mean, it's so dangerous. You might as well ride a bike out there. And so Polo, the challenge king, was like, yo, you should really ride a bike out there. Like, you should wear a thong and a pay me hat and y'all should ride your bikes and take a journey to Miami. And I was like, what? No, I'm not about to ride a bike. Like, yo, like, I was almost like, I was, yeah. no, not even that it's crazy, but I was just like, why are you doing this right now? Like, because I knew how real it could become. Knowing Polo, like, this wasn't a not realistic thing. Uh, it was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to drive my Jeep home. And now I'm probably going to have to ride a bike to Miami. Like, so he was like, well, so then my homegirl, she was like, yo, Vega, if we, like, we should really do it. Imagine how skinny we would be when we get back to Miami. And I was like, no, no. So Polo was like, oh, y'all can't do it. Y'all scared. Y'all, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I know I can do it. Like, that's another thing too that I always like feel like all of my fans and anybody even people who aren't my fans like whatever it is that you like if you believe that you can do it from the beginning you can do it if you believe that you can't you will not mentally you will not like you will never you won't make it if you say no this, that's on you if you believe it it's definitely possible and there's ways of going from a no to you possibly can do it I think that's a process but it it definitely can happen because anything's possible but um we end up going to a dick sporting goods right after that dinner and i was like all right cool let's go to dick sporting goods but i was still kind of like yeah whatever i'll just entertain this until <laughs> nobody's watching it and i just take off in my jeep type of thing, you know <laughs> you would so, do that what <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> so we get to the dick sporting goods we all go to the dick sporting goods polo stay in the car chilling waiting for us i think he was taking a a nap after he had the itis and so me, the girl that was with him, and my best friend all go upstairs to the third floor of Dick's Sporting Goods. When we get to the top, we're looking at a whole bunch of bikes. But we, I mean, what are we like? Okay, how are we gonna get there? Like, we just gonna pick any bike? Like, how are we gonna? So I go up to this old man, and I'm like, "Excuse me, sir, do you know anything about bikes?" And he was like, "Yeah, actually, I do know some stuff about bikes." I said, like, "Okay, can you help us because uh, we're trying to, you know, I'm like over it. Like, we're we're, we're getting a bike because we're gonna go to Miami on our bicycles." <laughs> Can you help us? He was like, oh, wow. You're going to Miami on a bicycle? I was like, yeah. I was like, first of all, I said, do you think that, I said, I want to ask you a serious question and I'm going to like basically go 
I'm gonna base my whole entire next two weeks on your answer. And I said, would you, um, if you had two weeks off, off of your life, would you ride a bicycle from here to Miami? 